I have a list of those. There's a line. Very low, very low standards. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Insights Podcast presented by Vantage Pro. Uh, I am your host, Duke, with my co-host, Van. Nope, over here. Hi. Yeah, over there. There. <laughs> it's nope, reversed. There. We just can't, there you get go. That, just can't get that down. Just can't get it down. I can't. I can't. <laughs> well, you know, I, we're only doing these every other week, right? So I right. have to, it's, there's a lot of life that happens in between these. So that, that is true. Um, that is very true. <laughs> but we're excited to be back with you guys and to have a special guest uh, who is this way. See, I got it right this time. Uh, I, I got it wrong and I'm the one controlling this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, guys, uh, the directions are hard. Trying to figure out where you're at is just hard. So it's left, okay. right. Well, this is it's stage directions versus house directions right yeah. now. So up, right, uh, stage, right, up, stage, <laughs> up, stage, down, stage, left. So right, exactly, exactly. But we're uh, we're excited to have our uh, our good friend and special guest, Pete Campbell, creative arts pastor at Mesa Church. Uh, I, man, it's good to see you. It's good to have you. Good guys thanks for having me on and uh i love i love the atmosphere in here already it's so good to be on here with you guys and just laughing away and talking stuff so this is go- awesome yeah we 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 decided uh when back when we were doing ch- church tech arts for 10 years uh it would be nothing if not fun for us and if anybody else <laughs> wants to listen then great <laughs> yeah <laughs> Sounds- I, I honestly think most podcasts are started because the people on the, the host of the podcast want to just talk. They First of all, they want to talk to each other. And secondly of all, mm-hmm. they want to talk to interesting people that they could never talk to any other way except get them on a podcast. All right. Sounds good. Well, uh, hopefully I'll be intriguing enough for you guys. So it'll be <laughs> awesome. I mean, you, you just have to be more more interesting than us. So the bar is low. It is the low <laughs> bar. Yeah. Was- yeah. <laughs> That, so we've that got, is, that's literally the only thing that I have on my list when I ask people. So are you more, are interesting, more interesting than interesting us? Than Duke and I? Yeah. Pete, yes. Okay, good. You can, I'll email. Yeah. <laughs> and if you don't make the list, we don't tell you. Yeah. So that's so that's terrifying. So in essence, so, what you're saying, if you never get the call or the invite. There's the answer right now. <laughs> right. Something like that. You yeah. Know. yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, um, so <laughs> Wow. Um, Hey, it's Van. I'm just going to jump in here for a quick second and ask you that if you like this content, please leave a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Click that notification bell and share this out on the socials if you can. And one more thing, leave a comment. We absolutely read them and we will respond to them. All right, back to the podcast. So we've got some history with you, man. Uh, And um, yeah, so... um, we we first met you gosh years ago um when when you guys were in a nice little venue you didn't own it but you guys were kind of long-term tenants there right yes yeah actually it was actually really complex so the church uh, used to be called newport mesa church um right. been around for over 80 years and we were on this property for actually 38 so the building that we were in we owned the building but we didn't okay. own the land the building sat on. So wow. that was, uh, I yeah. I, knew, I don't think I knew like, that. I don't, yeah, I didn't know that yeah. either. Yeah, so complexities okay. are relationships, you know. Uh, what worked generations ago with transition of time and people, you know, it just gets a little crazy. So, yeah, that's kind of how it was for our situation a little bit in that way. Well, and it was even wow, more and- unique because you were on the campus of uh, Vanguard University. So that was even more like a lot yeah. of... And you were in the, you're in the, then it's a crazy location too. Cause right across from fairgrounds yeah. and the freeways literally like right out your front <laughs> door and it's crazy. The police station is right behind you. I mean, it's like a weird uh, police department, fire department was right there. And then yeah, yeah, the OC fairgrounds. So that was always really uh, booming during, uh, you know, several times of the year. And then our church, uh, you know, we had our buildings, but then we shared and coexisted with the university. So throughout the midweeks and throughout uh, like college class schedules and stuff like that, you know, you've got chapels happening in the auditorium, classes are happening in different rooms and parts of the building. So it was definitely uh, learning how to coexist uh, while also, uh, you know, accomplishing ministry and, and serving people. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Which is probably a whole different podcast because that it's uh, like anytime we start working with a church, 
and they start saying, yeah, we have this, you know, this other church that meets in our building on the week on Sunday afternoons or Saturday nights. And then we do, you know, all these other parachurch ministries and this and that. And the other thing, it's like, man, I love the fact that you guys are doing all that in your building, but wow, that's, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. a lot of things to navigate. There. It really yeah. is for sure. It seems complex. Yeah. Wow. So you guys, you guys started at some point, obviously you went, okay, it's time for us to get a home. Um, yeah. Walk us through what happened after that. Cause that, that's a journey. Yeah. Um, so uh, really it came down to uh, both, uh, you know, our church and then Vanguard University, which great university, by the way, uh, but just had to. Uh, really come face to face and hey, what are some next steps? And so in that process, you know, we uh, said, hey, we're going to go ahead and take that step of faith and uh, figure out, okay, God, what is it that you want to have for our church? Where is it that you want us to move? And in the process of trying to figure all these things out, then the pandemic happened, you know, <laughs> and so uh, and went from all of those different things and being here in uh, Southern California, we had a lot of different restrictions and and so it was trying to figure out how do you do ministry. So in some ways that actually helped catapulted us in, uh, moving forward into being a portable church. You know, uh, that was really interesting when we had a perfectly great building sitting right there with all of the technology and equipment and instruments and chairs. And now we're having <laughs> on a lawn, you know, with portable speakers that we're just pulling up and setting up and everybody's sitting in beach chairs with umbrellas or picnic blankets and we're just dying because of the heat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, but uh, it definitely helped us move forward. And um, in a lot of ways, what this whole transition helped us uh, was two things. It uh, helped us work out some muscles that had atrophied mm. over being in place for so long um, that we were able to pioneer a lot of different things, see God do a lot of great things. Um, but so it helped us with, uh, building up and, and really, you know, bringing back to health some muscles that had atrophied. And then two, it just made us flexible, um, which isn't always a great thing. <laughs> you know, when you're being stretched, it doesn't feel good all the time, <laughs> you know? So those were a couple of things that it's, uh, it really helped move us forward in that way. Yeah, yeah. that's kind of an interesting point. Cause I, I think one of the things that's always fascinating, like we're, we're, we're working with a, a church down in Florida that still doesn't have a home. There's they're meeting in a school auditorium. And, and so, you know, it's so fascinating to watch them do ministry because there's some things that they're doing that are incredible and they're doing multiple services a week in the school auditorium. Um, but they're, because they're portable because of some of the things they have to do every week, they're very laser focused on what they do and don't do. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, how, that's and really how true. Was, how was that transition when, you, so you guys knew that you were, in le you were leaving, you know, you, there was, a, yeah. there was, and you knew you had to be out by a certain time and you were, and we're in COVID and all the things. <laughs> so what, what was kind of that process of, of, of deciding, you know, okay, we got to have like, we have, what are we doing? You know? Yeah, it was, um, you know, one, when you move, you can't take everything with you. And so in a lot of ways, even with the pandemic, uh, it helped us in some ways kind of get some focus back again. You know, what's the why? Why do we do what we do? Um, you know, what's our goal? Are we just trying to run programs or are we actually trying to do ministry? Are we actually trying to reach people? And those were hard conversations. You know, because when uh, when you go through seasons of life and you've had some experience and you've gone through different things, it's uh, it's very easy to sometimes get caught up in thinking those previous things define you or mm. give you value. Uh, but then in reality, you've got to step out and say, no, what is it that God is doing today? You know, what is the thing that he's doing now? You know, Isaiah has that passage where it was, you know, uh, it was, says, see that I am doing a new thing. And in the bottom line of it, it says, do you not perceive it? You know, those have been some of the biggest things that I've had in these in this transition for us was like always asking myself, OK, God, I know you're doing a new thing today, but are my eyes open? Are my ears open? Is my mind open to actually see you doing something that you're inviting me and these other people and our teams and all this stuff to actually be a part of? Yeah, that's 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 insane. And mm -hmm. and 
<laughs> so when we got involved with you, what was the, what was the process of doing, you know, of, okay, here's the things we absolutely have to have because, <laughs> yeah. you know, because now did, did you guys actually, did you guys have the building th that you eventually are, that you're in now? Was that already in process when you, when, when COVID started or did that come about in, in that process? That came about in the process, um, you know, because we were dreaming and then, uh, you know, the price tag here in Southern California isn't exactly cheap. So it's, no. uh, it's hard, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, I know some of you who are watching, you're like, wait, really? Yeah, no, it's not, <laughs> you know, but it's, it's insane, the idea, yeah. uh, you know, we had to step out and really exercise even this faith muscle of like, God, you've given us these resources. We have some money. Now, how can we be good stewards with this? Uh, oh, you know, I've got friends who are church planners who have, they've been doing this for years. Um, and you know, they're still portable. There's still all of these different things, right? Each church each congregation, shall I say, it, it has its own makeup. It has its own lifespan of like, hey, this is how old we're at. Whereas for us, we were a church of 80 something years old. And to say, hey, now we're going fully portable and and to think uh, like, it's one thing to have faith, but it's also another thing to really look at the, the track record and look at what has gone before and what's coming next. And, and all of the different things that we were having to navigate with people moving and going mass exodus out of California and all this stuff, like we had to mm. dream again and then understand like what can be done. You know, we came into our property here at uh, 17660 Cowan and it was an old medical warehouse with a two story section that was made for offices. Um, and I remember walking in and I, I was like, God, what? help me to see what you're what you're doing and i could see in the back i was like all right here's an auditorium here's a cool lobby here's all these different things like in this two-story section we can totally make it into the kids space so when we met with you guys um you know i'm not kidding like we finally got connected with you i was so thankful to be honest with you um because i know what what was already being asked of us as a team as as the pastors on staff as a church leadership we needed somebody to come alongside to help bear the load and not just bear the load and all those different things. And yes, you know, part of it was a plan that you guys helped establish and, and, and we paid and all those different things. But I, what I really loved more than that, it wasn't just a paid partnership, uh, like in serving with you guys as Vantage and you guys coming in the way that you guys did and, and kind of hearing our heart, asking us these questions and not even just simple questions, but tough questions. And then getting us to, to dream a little bit deeper, um, it was so beneficial in a lot of ways that now I was like, okay, I can dream all of these things and, and you're helping capture it and you're helping carry it a little bit. And we're now, we're sharing the weight, um, as to not for me as the creative arts pastor at the time, uh, being completely overloaded and, and, uh, I mean, I even, even, you know, I was on two pretty large church staffs and people would ask us that they'd say, well, why did you guys hire an integrator? And I'm like, well, because yeah, we have a team that could do all these things. Here's the problem. We're doing church. Like we have like a ton of events a week that I have to do. I can't do this and this at the same time. Or I mean, I, I'd be here literally 24 seven. I'd never sleep. And that's not a good <laughs> long-term strategy for anything. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, that that's really, really, that's, that that's a good point because I don't think people understand unless you go through a project like you guys went through and you guys went through the extreme. I mean, <laughs> you moved out of your building, you moved into how, how many, what'd you say is like 17 different locations? <laughs> Eight different locations, uh, range from, uh, our, our most used location was a hotel. Um, right. and we went from using two ballrooms to four ballrooms to six ballrooms and sometimes even three ballrooms. Imagine doing service in L shaped room. Right. Yeah, crazy, right? Um and, and then we also used their parking garage. That was a if you you're talking about sound and technology, that is probably the worst nightmare any guy could ever have. Try mixing a great worship mix in a parking garage that's full of concrete pillars and stuff. It just doesn't work, but you have people right. who have expectations thinking, oh yeah, this should be easy. And it's like, no, it's not. You're crazy. You know? So those yeah. were definitely some of the, the things that we had. So 
Yeah, I remember um, going to the hotel the first time. Uh, I think I think it was like the very first service. I was there and um, and just why and then walking. You and I walked out into the parking structure where the kids were meeting. <laughs> I was like, "Huh, I've been in church my whole life. I don't think I've ever seen a kids ministry in a parking lot." Usually, usually we tell the kids not to play in the parking lot. <laughs> Yeah, wow. it was it was unique. I mean, we were laying down grass carpeting for to create some type of a, a nice clean floor space. Uh, uh man, yeah, it's it's crazy to even think back think back on all of it. Yep. Yeah. But it worked. But there's I mean, some guys, there's some nuggets in there that you were saying that I think are are really cool and have a lot of wisdom to it. Um just as you were talking about you know, trying to even get yourself into at least some of the systems that were going to be down the road, you know, starting to bring people up to speed now, get, getting some of that training. I mean, it's, you know, the expectations of portable church are very different than once you're in the facility, right? You know, it's, you can be yeah. a little less polished. And so it's a great learning ground for new people. It's a great learning ground for uh, new consoles and those kinds of things, because you can kind of get away with a lot more. <laughs> Yeah, we can normally on a normal on a normal uh, when everything's normal. But during the pandemic, it was uh, it was we were really trying to knock out as many as stones as we could or, or as many birds with one stone as we could. So it was like getting the right system that we, that would be eventually in the building uh, and then, you know, doing portable church. But then guess what? We're not only just portable now, we're also online, you know, right. and uh, run online digital services because. You know, like what Van you had said earlier, like at the same exact time, we're still doing church. Um, but now that we're in a project and all these different things, I don't have time in my teams or in my own schedule to try and produce a service every single week. You know, now that we're doing both and <laughs> right. um, crushing, it would be it was so crushing to to try to run that race. And in reality, that was a, that was a race that we're not all supposed to run, you know, yeah. um, so well, what did you, what did you learn about, you know, because, you know, I, I think when you're in a building for a long time, um, you get very comfortable with, you know, we can do all the things and we've got all the lights and we've got all the, you know, all the different elements and we can have poetry over on this corner and then we can do this and we can do that, you know, whatever. And, <laughs> and, uh, you know, but then when you have to like hone it down after you've been doing things a certain way for so long, when you have to hone it down. Um, I'm always amazed at coming out of that going, you know what? We really didn't need all that stuff to do amazing ministry. And I mean, how did that kind of realign your thought process when you got into the, the new building about how you were going to do services and, and, you know, creative elements and stuff like that? Yeah, I think for us, uh, one, we had to celebrate wins. So um, always keep approaching uh, things with a heart that's gra grateful, a heart of gratitude. So celebrate the wins. And remember that the wins, like it's cool to do all the creative things. It's awesome when you have an illustration that uh, totally just blows everyone's minds and they're talking about it or, um, or you're create, able to create some video sets or even these atmospheres and stuff with lights and, and create these moods and, 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 move the, and stir these feelings. Um, or emotions, but when you get down to the nitty gritty of it all, like if you removed all of that away, if you stripped all of that away, what do you still have? You have people. And so for us, it was getting back once again, like if it doesn't start with people in mind, if it doesn't start with helping people build new relationships and moving forward, then is it really worth it? So portable back in the facility, uh, you know, once again, just remembering that it was celebrating the wins understanding that it was people that got you there. It was, and it wasn't that people were being used. It was the idea that we were traveling in this journey together and doing this together. And so uh, getting into our new building here, uh, if people weren't at the end of our why or part of the why and building relationships and helping people take next steps, then we really asked, is it really worth doing? And so how has that been? How has that been playing out now that you've been in the church? You've been in your new building a year, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, we've had our ups and downs, 
you know, uh, because one, you want to dream and you want to keep innovating. Uh, but then we've also had to uh, make sure that we're growing at the at a healthy pace, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, doing things margin um, uh, because I'm a doer. And so it's very easy for me to go pedal to the metal and and then say, OK, yeah, God did it. You know, God was God was eating it when in reality it was like, no, I was just too prideful or confident that I didn't allow him to actually speak to me or lead me, <laughs> you know. And so it was uh, keeping myself and keeping our teams in that vulnerable place of like, God, what is it you're doing? Um, and then uh, really staying focused uh, long enough that the heat would generate where we wanted it to actually generate to produce what we wanted it to produce. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the things that I, I, I saw, and I, I mean, I've seen this with other, other things, but I, one of the things I saw with your team is, is that, um, once you did get in the building, uh, I think I was there on, on a, on a Sunday and the, like the, there was a Dante issue where you, there was, it took us a while to figure out exactly what happened, but anyway, it yeah. got, it got, but your, your entire team, the, one of the things that I loved being there is that your team did not freak out. Yeah. They, they just didn't freak out at all. They were just like, oh, no, well, yeah, it's not working. Okay. Let's just reboot this and do this and do this. And, 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 and I was even like, I don't know if you should do that. And they're like, you're like, no, that's fine. We'll just we'll redo that. And it, it was fine, but it was, <laughs> I just love the fact that because you had all been in so many crazy situations over the past hey, couple of years, I'm just going to jump in here. For it a quick really and ask you made your like team super content. resilient. Um, mm -hmm. ab ab mm -hmm. about, about fixing problems and about, you know, and to me that made your team closer. I don't know how, yeah, if you want to speak to that a little bit about how, how that really kind of, uh, you know, I, it was really iron sharpening iron there for a couple of years that paid off. Yeah. I used to think, oh man, I've seen it all or I've seen so much. And then, um, uh, I always seem to get blown away or my mind or my eyes are open to, nope, there's something else new. Um, on that way of what to experience. But uh, I found that as long as we kept, if we remember the why of what we're doing, um, then in reality, uh, none of us uh, have to carry that weight when technical problems like happen, because they're always gonna happen. Um, and what I mean by that, it's like, we're part of this process of God choosing to use us to impact the life, to reach a person. Um, you know, we're not the ones who saved them, <laughs> you know, it isn't all of these different things that will save a person. Like we can't save a person, but yet, um, you know, so in, in helping remember the why, then it allows us to really approach every situation and just with a calm and a peace. Um, you know, I, I kind of, uh, I really asked, uh, God to do a work in my life, like as a leader, as an influencer type person, like to, to try to work up being calm. You know, uh, because it's that's the only way you're going to be able to think with a leveled head, you know, to try and approach some situation, even if it's something that you're not familiar with. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I and 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 I, I think one of the things that I'll just say on that, too, just being there and witnessing, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say I like coming to one of our 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 partner churches and then seeing something happen. It's shouldn't be happening. But I did really love watching cause I'm a, cause you know, I think a lot of us who are tech directors, we're troubleshooters. That's what we, you know, we're, that's, you, you don't, you can't be, have longevity as a technical director, technical person without having that skill of being able to troubleshoot issues. But I, I really appreciated the fact that because your leadership was very calm cause you stayed calm through the whole thing. And so mm -hmm. that the energy that you were, putting out of being calm, of staying like, it's all good, whatever. It's totally fine. And that made your whole team stay calm as well. You know, and yeah. I, I don't think leaders understand how, if you freak out, that's, that's, uh, you know, I, I remember always telling my guys and girls at, uh, mag, I said two things we'd never do back here. We never run and we never yell. I said, <laughs> because if you run or yell, everybody else is like, well, if the tech people are running and yelling, 
<laughs> what is happening? <laughs> you know, so I really appreciated that. It was really cool to watch um, the growth of your, even from that first weekend in the hotel, because I was with your team yeah. for that whole week, you know, that whole uh, weekend. And then coming yeah. back later well, in the building just to see the growth of the the folks was really cool. So kudos to you Thanks. and your and your leadership uh, team on that because I think you guys did a really great job on that. Yeah, we had lots of opportunities to be stretched and to grow because I can definitely reflect when we were first getting through those shifts that, uh, yeah, I wasn't that calm. And <laughs> <laughs> I found, you know, if like – you know, when you're, when you're overwhelmed and, uh, overloaded, even emotionally or mentally, um, there's a cost. And so, uh, with like, it affected, there were times where it affected my, my worship leading. It affected my, you know, all those different things. And it was like, is it worth it? You know? And that's where it kind of got me back to it again. It was like, and I had my moments, um, you know, even today, like every once in a while, I'll still have a, something will pop up and it's a test. It's an opportunity to grow once again. It's an opportunity to, to get flexible again, <laughs> you know, whatever it might be. Um, but it's how you approach it and just always trying to keep yourself grounded to be able to make the right decision when the time calls for it. Yeah. And then you have yeah. the added pressure of everybody who just walked in five minutes ago telling you what's wrong. Like you, like yeah. you don't know it, like you're in the room, right? It was always, that's always my, <laughs> one of my favorite things about churches. Hey, do you know that guy's mic's not on? Yeah, I, I do know that. <laughs> They're all experts. They're I'm all aware. experts. Right. Exactly. Well, I, I, I used to tell uh, Mike, because I had, when I was at Mariners, I had a bunch of college kids that worked for me. And I said, don't just cut yourself some slack because there's two things that everybody knows when they walk into this building. They know their name and they knew how to do your job better than you do. So just know that <laughs> <laughs> and just stay focused and yeah. I'll be okay. So, yeah, it is really fun. It, it is funny the liberties that church people take. Like if they were paying $200 to go see a concert, they would never talk to the techs or the artist or any, they would never talk to them like that. But they, but in church, they, <laughs> they do. And you've got to keep a cool head about it, you know? So. Yeah. One, one of the other things I think that really struck me, I got a chance to spend Sunday with you guys here a couple months ago. Maybe it was longer than that now. It, it was like May or something. But one of the things that really struck me, I know you're um, you're a big family guy. Uh, you know, you're you're always talking Ohana, right? And uh, yeah. one of the things I found really fascinating was at the end of service, like I'm hanging around to just catch you guys, say hi for a few minutes, and and just talk. And like I stood there and waited for a long time, like way longer than I normally would at a church because you and your lead pastor and all of these people, I mean, you guys just were in it with family. Like it was like half an hour, 45 minutes post service. And you guys are still just hanging out, talking to people. Um, and that's, that's not always normal. Like a lot of people, you know, they get done with services and they're like, cool. See you next week. We're out. <laughs> So that seems to be yeah. a pretty deep part of not just your culture, but, but really culture overall there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at Mesa, uh, you know, we say there's always room at the table. And when you really think about that, uh, things shouldn't be rushed, you know, uh, especially when you're in a family setting, it's, uh, uh, you know, I mean, we just had, uh, Thanksgiving recently, you know, and, and it's the idea of what do you do? You know, everybody eats, but then they talk hang out and then they all find places and everybody just kind of communes like all over the place, a house into a different room, whatever it may be. Um, but it's about the people. It's about, uh, you know, what we're able to do together. And so, yeah, that's definitely something that uh, we value pretty strongly. And, uh, you know, when you're serving and you're, you know, in a lot of ways too, you're also putting on productions, uh, you know, and different things there. It's, it's very easy that to, to overlook and, and like I said earlier, you know, we got to keep people the main thing, because if they're not the main thing, then there really is no reason to say, hey, we're a church. <laughs> we're the body of Christ who really loves people, you know, uh, when if we don't put people first and if we don't put relationships first, if we don't put actually having a sincere care and wanting to not just know about their life, but actually do life, you know. Um, so, yeah. 
Yeah, I think. What are? Oh, oh go, go ahead. ahead, Duke. Sorry. Well, I was just going to say, what are some what are some practical ways that are like really kind of in the forefront of your mind? Because I think this is this is actually real life leadership lessons right here. Um, cause most of us as leaders need to probably be better and, and more intentional at that. What, what are some things that, um, you and your team try to be kind of intentionally do this? Yeah. Um, it's maximizing the moment is what I would say. So, uh, if I've got five minutes with somebody, then try to encourage all of our teams, like, Hey, when you're with somebody, be all the way there. Um, you know, to be fully present in that moment. Cause I think, uh, you know, there are certain people that I'd love to spend all, all day with and hang out with and all that time, you know, that type of stuff. But because of time and schedules and, and life and family and all these different things, it's hard to, uh, always be intentional and carve out all of that time. Uh, but if I know that I was able to spend time with somebody and I had their full attention and they were fully engaged for that moment, that five minutes could be like a lifetime. You know, that that listening ear really shift uh, things in my heart that I walked in with that day, all because I was fully present. You know, I don't think it's always about the, the quantity, right? But it's really about the quality of the time. And so helping our teams and, and our people understand, like, you know, it's not just me. So, you know, I'm never like, I remember talking to our teams, like, I can't help fill all of your tanks. That's not my job. You know, but I can help love you, encourage you, and put you in a place where you can do the same, where you can win, or you can do all, you know, trying to once again, like, it's just like how I parent my kids. It's like, I want to put you guys and set you guys up so you can, you know, and uh, and that's kind of how we've just really took a intentionality hey, Van, in, in what I'm we do jump in here for, for a our quick teams. second and ask you that if you like this content. Well, one of the one of the things I'd love for you to, to kind of speak into is is, you know, we started this whole thing by talking about having a plan. You know, when you're going to do a bunch of crazy stuff, I, you know, just from hearing you talk about all this stuff, I, how it seems like you, you do value ha making a plan, having a plan and all this stuff. And that kind of speak to how that frees, does that, do you feel like having a plan does freeze you up to do the actual ministry rather than being so caught up in the thing of doing ministry rather than doing ministry? Yeah, having the plan. Um, I mean, there's so many different quotes and different things out there, but it's the idea, right? If uh, if you have a plan, you know, like if you if you don't have a plan, then you can plan to fail. Right. Um, you know, being able to have a plan, uh, being able to actually partner with you guys and have somebody help uh, shoulder the mental load. Because mm. uh, I'm a creative at heart, so for me, it's uh, I can't get stuck in the weeds or in the minute details. Uh, that's why God brings other people along with you. That was nice with uh, working with you guys and, and you guys generating that plan for us. Um, it helped take the mental load off of my head, in my mind. Because uh, as a creative, I, I can't allow myself to get stuck in all the minute details because it will literally suck the life out of me. Mm. Um, and so partnering with you guys, um, to be honest, <laughs> I, I don't know to say this jokingly, even though I'm laughing at it, but like uh, being able to work alongside you guys in this whole process and stuff like that, especially carrying the load that you guys did with building the infrastructure, with dreaming and, and all of these different things, and even helping uh, resource our team or creating the, you know, Mike, uh, creating the, the, the layouts with all the system mapping and all the conduit stuff. And it was like all these different things. Um, it kept me from not quitting. <laughs> well, that's good. Like, I, I mean, be honest, it's because there's so many things that if, uh, you know, like none of us are supposed to be a one man show. And so if we were to do that, you know, we're going to all burn out. Um, but to understand that there are people just like how I think about my teams and the guy and the teams that God has graced me with, like being able to partner with you guys, there's a reason why we partnered with you guys. You know, it was because you're able to help do the, some of those things and I don't have to worry about it. And that's the other part is getting to a place with having a plan. When you have a plan, you've also got to be uh, confident enough and not prideful or full of this ego to actually let go of control of it. And the trust, um, you know, and those are hard things that are, are sometimes not easy to come by. 
Yeah. yeah. I think what a lot of what a lot of ministry people sort of short sell sometimes is again just how I mean, ministry is hard, right? And it's any even if you're a part-time person in ministry, you're full-time plus. Um, I mean, yeah. I remember my first part-time ministry job, it was 40 hours. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, and having to having to throw a building project on top of things, uh, especially if it's a chaotic building project and it's not one that's well thought out and well planned out ahead of time. Like every time something new comes up, like the whole team just starts spinning out again and ministry is what suffers. You know, it's the weekend, that weekend this weekend no longer gets two days of thought um, because now we've totally spun out because nobody came up with any kind of direction for what we're doing with the lobby or the bathrooms or, you know, where, I mean, it's it, like you look back at it and you go, man, we like totally tanked an entire weekend because we all got spun out over this. But that's, yeah. that's what happens in a lot of building projects because churches aren't willing to spend a few dollars up front to have it well planned out ahead of time so that the process is smoother, um, less cumbersome, and frankly, allows you guys to focus on ministry more. Yeah. Yeah, I think, right? I mean, in reality of it, when you, especially when you get into technology and sound and AV and all those different things, the price tag isn't cheap. Sure. You know, there's a, there's a difference from, from going out and buying something at Best Buy, <laughs> you know, and then going out and buying something from a, 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 a you know, a, a different type of store that actually produces the type of equipment that you're needing. And um, if you get so scared of the price tag, uh, then you've got to figure out, you've got to count the cost. Like you always have to count the cost, period. You know, you got to be a good steward with it. Um, but I know in our project, um, I remember we had some conversations with our own team and I was like, we have a once in a lifetime opportunity because this building is completely exposed to put the bones in this thing. Mm -hmm. You know, last time I checked, you know, it's, it's a lot easier to build the skeletal system and the, and the structure and all of those different things with the conduit and all that stuff when there are no walls, than if I wanted to come through and try to put new wall, new piping in, new bones in, all these different things. And so uh, I know we took a step of faith and said, you know what, this is the big dream. So let's dream the big dream, but then put the conduit and the skeletal structure in with the, the building so that as our church grows, now we've got space to actually grow into it. You know, right. the, the building is the final destination. It wasn't the final, it's still not the finished product um, because the church is always changing. Yet uh, giving ourselves the space on that end uh, helped us so much, you know? Well, and I think, I think on the infrastructure side of life too, I mean, one of the things that we're always trying to think about, um, especially during kind of those initial uh, dreaming meetings um, is really trying to hear where you are now, but also trying to, to add a little bit of forethought to making the building flexible with you. Um, Cause you know, I, so much stuff right now is one set of wire and in 10 years, it's all going to be different sets of wire, but the locations are probably still going to be relatively solid. So it's like, do we have pathways between these? Can we like, that, and that's one of the things I'm always talking to like electricians every time they see our conduit plans, they go, gosh, do we really need all this conduit? Can't we just run it open through the ceiling? And it's like, well, you can run it open through the ceiling the first time and it won't cost any more. But that second yeah. time, like five years down the road when the church wants to do something different, uh, 10 years down the road when all the Cat 6 becomes Cat 12, you know, uh, <laughs> when all the HD uh, video cable becomes 4K video cable, like if the pathways aren't there, We've, the church is now hosed 10 years down the road. And so all of those infrastructure conversations and plans and all of that is what hopefully makes the building flex with you as things change down the road. Because the gear will change. The, how you yeah. use the gear will change. But pathways, pathways are the things that will probably never change because it's someday, well, we just can't ever get to a wholly wireless society. There's just not enough uh, frequencies in the air for that. So, right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and never power, wireless power is still squirrely. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think, I think, um, and we were having this conversation with a, a school that we're working with. Um, and it's, a, a, it's funny because it's the stuff that we count as sexy, you know, the led walls, the lights, the things people can see, uh, you know, you have a lot, sometimes it's easier for people to give to that. But then when you say, well, man, there's this number here and this is all wire and conduit that's going to be behind a wall. How, how do I, you know, you gave to that, but actually, you know, casting the vision for that's the most important part of the system because that's like you said, I love it. I love how you said that. And it just dawned on me that I've never said those words, but you said it's the skeletal system. You know, the mm -hmm. skeletal system is built before, you know, I mean, like you build a skeletal system of a building before you put the skin on. But what yeah. so many times we do with uh, AV systems is everybody wants to put all the, you know, put the walls up and everything like that. And then, and then have to cut open everything. And I mean, if you had the, you know, I mean, I remember my godfather had to have his hip, like a whole hip bone replaced and the amount of like they were explaining to us what, how they had to do it with spreading the muscles apart and all the crazy stuff. And you're like, wow, that was really hard. And we do that in churches where we're like, oh, we're going to have to, you know, uh, saw cut the concrete <laughs> and all this stuff. And you're like, no, just put, put the conduits in, but we're not using those three conduits. Not now, <laughs> but you're sure be glad you have them later. You know, but that's hard to get people to understand how, that, you know, to pay for that upfront is just really good stewardship. And it's also blessing the people that will follow you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. We had to, um, you know, like I said, we were 80 some year old church. So I had to learn uh, the right way to communicate. The right words to communicate. You know, so when you've been involved in tech and music and all these different things, it's like, oh, yeah, how do you not know what this an XLR is compared to a shielded wire and unshielded? Like, how do you not know? Come on, right. you know, or whatever it is. But then you're trying to sell people on, well, this is what it's supposed to be. So it was like, I've got to get real creative in helping paint other visual illustrations so that when I do tell everybody this is what we're dreaming into and not just dreaming, this is what we're building, that they're able to grasp a hold of it. Because even though you can't see the bones, you know that they're there, you yeah. know, that's what's keeping my arm from being rubber band. And, uh, you know, so it was just kind of some of those things and, uh, and having to, once again, just, uh, be patient. I can't say it enough. Be patient. Um, there was a lot of times where my patience was tested, um, because people weren't <laughs> understanding, they weren't understanding. Um, and it was like, and it's not their fault. You know, in some way, it's it's literally we've we've got so many bridges that we're trying to build with people, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, and so just having to be patient and understand once again, too, that people are people. And uh, if we can just love them and uh, take them a step by step, even though it might have even been slower than what I would have liked it to be, you know, we're, we still make it, you know, so. Yeah, it's one of those things where you're just like, oh, that's only going to take a couple of hours. No, that's going to take like. <laughs> they're like no yeah. that'll just that'll be fine i'm like nope it's gonna be like <laughs> yeah yeah so what uh, you know as we kind of wrap this thing up like what like what are your what are your two or three pearls of wisdom of things that you did right and then or no, let's do let's end on a positive so the things you did wrong <laughs> <laughs> things that you would do differently and then we'll end on the things that you really loved about, you know, when you finally got into the building. So what's a couple of things you, you wish you could have done differently? One, um, uh, too many cooks in the kitchen, right? Uh, mm. is a good thing. And, uh, we were working with uh, a lot of cooks in the kitchen in a lot of different areas. Um, if I had the opportunity to do it all over again, um, I would have said, Hey, like manage you guys, you're one of our main cooks and I don't want to invite anybody else in to help cook this, 
secret sauce that we're doing. Um, you know, in essence, I have, uh, you, you guys were able to help us with our audio video runs and different things, but you guys also walked into part of, you guys were also flexible in walking into a part of a video project that we already had invested in, uh, not fully thinking the big plan. And, uh, but we made, but you guys, you not only made it work, you helped us to thrive with what we have, um, you know, but that would definitely be one. So uh, be a lot more, just a lot more, ah, man, just stubborn and hard headed to say like, I don't want as many people in this kitchen um, so that we can actually cook something that does match the big picture even that I had in my head when I thought about this building, um, you know, with all the tech and with the amount of people that we were gonna need, <laughs> you know, and all of these different things. Mm. Cause you know, when you're volunteers and not having a full staff, it's uh, it, it definitely adds some complexities. Now it gives pe people plenty of opportunity, but you also need the, the people who want to be a part of those opportunities. So that was definitely a hard learning curve. Uh, one that uh, I have definitely kind of tucked away in there as a, a, a valuable lesson learned, um, you know, with that. So that's the biggest one that I would say for sure for me um, in that, just because when you're entering into a building and a dream project, there are so many people, so many voices, so many, uh, you gotta be really cautious. You know, everybody's so. got an opinion. Not everybody has yeah. knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, yeah. That's, exactly. you know, and, and one of the things that I always say, you know, to somebody that we're, you know, uh, we're getting involved with their project. I always say, you know, we're going to have these design meetings and it's super, super important to have all the people that have, um, that have a say, not everybody that has an opinion. Yeah. Yeah. We just, just cause you have an opinion doesn't mean you can come to the meeting. If you have a say, if you're going to actually be part of the solution to the pro the process, then absolutely be part of the meeting. But if you just have, cause you know, I always joke and say, well, you know, not that everybody in church doesn't have an opinion about the, everything. <laughs> right. You know, but well, that's, that, yeah, that's really, that's, that's really good. So what, what are the couple of things that you're glad you did? Like you're really happy that worked out you know, the way that you wanted it in, in the, you know, in this whole thing. Yeah. Um, I think one, it was right. Like I said before, uh, that we dreamed into it, uh, two, um, I also say that uh, we stepped out of our comfort zones. Hmm. Um, it was really, uh, nice. Uh, cause I had some preconceived ideas too, in my mind. And then part of things that I work with and experienced and that I loved. You know, sometimes it's funny when you're uh, able to design something or to be a part of a build like this, you're like, oh, well, I experienced that or I heard this and I got to work with that. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. And it's not always the same exact thing of being able to put into it. So, um, you know, being able to step out and say, all right, this is what we've got. This is what we're trying to create and being flexible to work with that. So uh, those were the big ones. Um, and then. Uh, uh, the other things that I really just admired and appreciated, I think probably from this whole entire journey uh, with you guys as well, is uh, uh, the relational aspect of it. So, uh, you know, it was more than just a job and more than just an install, uh, you know, and uh, even to like to this day, like we still connect here and there and uh, and I'm rooting for you guys and you're rooting for us, you know, so it's 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 a kingdom type thing. It's It's definitely bigger than just ourselves. So that's what I appreciate the most. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's yeah, I boy, I, I <laughs> echo that one a lot. I mean, whether it's your drywall guys or your electricians or your contractors, your architects, I mean, there's there's all these different levels of people who have influence over any project. But the more you can stick with people who are kingdom minded, um, it's not just a cute thing. It actually makes a huge difference in the process overall. They're a lot more invested in. Um, especially building a church, um, they 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 generally are much more passionate about it versus, you know, the guys who are going from this to the casino job to the office building to the whatever. You're just another you're just another project, right? Yeah, and we I mean we honestly will you know we uh, we're we're uh, I mean you got you know us we're we're we are as picky as our customers are about who we actually choose as customers people. And, and honestly, that's, I, I actually think that's a good thing. I, I, I think that's, 
I mean, we talk a lot about this internally that we really look at like, okay, we're going to be spending a lot of time with these, these folks. Are we, are, 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 are we going to be a good fit for them? Are they going to be a good fit for us? Are we going to be able to partner with them and really help them uh, advance the kingdom uh, in this project, you know? And so I think that's, yeah, that's uh, partnership is, is, you know, it can't be overstated how important yeah. it is to be on yeah, the same indeed. page with the people that you're working with on a project because projects are indeed. hard. And if you don't like the people you're with, <laughs> they're even harder, <laughs> you know, I mean, honestly, you know, yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. No, very cool. Well, Pete, man, we're, we're just so thankful to hang out with you for a while and uh, thanks for coming and having some fun with us and uh, reminiscing a little bit and uh, man, we're just going to, we're going to keep rooting for you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me be a part of this and uh, be able to just dive into this conversation with you guys. So appreciate it. Yeah. And we'll yeah, put yeah. all your, uh, all your uh, various links and everything in the, in the, um, <laughs> in the show notes and stuff below. So I'll yep. get all that stuff and we'll put it all in there. So okay. yeah. So, awesome. so thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Um, make sure you uh, subscribe and, and like our YouTube channel. Uh, we have, we have more of these. We've done a couple now. Um, <laughs> it's so yeah, and, share, and, and honestly, share them out, share them to people that you think might enjoy, uh, you know, what we're doing here and, and please uh, do. And uh, just a little, just a little uh, plug for uh, YouTube uh, music. Um, you can also just listen to audio only on this. You can also listen to audio only on this on, you know, other, you know, catchers, uh, YouTube, YouTube listening devices that I know if I say the YouTube will probably not like that. So I won't actually say what they are, but, uh, yeah, you, I mean, you don't have to just watch audio. You can listen to, listen to the, or you can just start the video and put your phone in your pocket. Right? Yeah, I know. You it's, don't have yeah. To. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to look there, at us. There's other it. devices, so uh, because I have gotten some emails like, "Why don't you guys do this on audio podcast?" And I'm like, "Well, I know. you know, get in." It, it's 2023, folks. So, well, based based on our popular demand, which whichever it is now. So, yeah, popular demand, which I think is mostly my mother. I uh, just really wanted to see her faces. So, <laughs> it's funny, and that's an opinion that matters, Duke. That's an opinion that matters. It so. is no, yeah. totally. <laughs> Well, I thought so before, before we started recording, uh, Pete and I were talking about, it's just, it still stuns me, even though I am this person, but it is so weird to me that people will just watch people talk. They'll watch people talk. And then I thought, well, wait a minute, I watch people talk. So it's, I, it's like, I don't know why, but it just is one of those things that's funny to me, but it, it's where we are now, you know? I watch you talk every meeting, so. I know. I know you do. <laughs> yeah. All right. With that, we should wrap up. But yes, yeah, please, uh, please hit us up on the socials, like and follow. Uh, and we'll see you back next time with uh, more great content.